Okay, so here we are. Uh, what we have in front of me is uh, scale, so I can weigh out the appropriate amount of my broccoli. I have my sample, this is my broccoli here. Okay, And I have a mortar and pestle sitting on ice, so it's nice and cold. Okay, I will also place um, a funnel and a flask inside the ice as well, just to make sure that it's nice and cold, so when I'm adding my sample to them, they're going into a nice, cold sort of space, so that minimizes enzymatic reactions, okay? I'm also going to need some um, cheesecloth, so I'm going to take a bit of the cheesecloth here and kind of fold it up, so I have about four layers of cheesecloth, maybe a little bit more right now. Okay, so it's a small funnel, so a small amount of a small cheesecloth sheet folded over a few times will do. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we prepare the homogenate, and then we're going to spin these down. Okay, so I also have my handy flow chart for today. Okay, so I have an idea of what I'm going to be doing step by step. That's close by so I can refer to it at any time, okay? I've got a razor blade so I can shave off just the top surface of the, of the broccoli. So that's what I'm gonna do now, is I'm just going to start putting that into the weigh boat. So I'll start chopping. And so here we go. It's gonna get a little messy. So what you're trying to do is get about 8 grams. There's nothing magical about 8 grams, so if you don't get exactly 8, if you get 7.3 or something like that, it's fine. If you get 10, that's also okay. So by roughly aiming for about 8 grams or so of tissue. And I'm just chopping off at the surface of this because they're nice small pieces, and so they will be a lot easier to grind up. Okay, If I were just to take a, take a big chunk of the tissue like from from this end that would be much more difficult to grind up so the top is very easy to work with it's easy to try to homogenize and so that's why we're using that top layer the first few millimeters is really all we need so that's what I've got here so here's my way boat gonna place that on here I've got about eight grams Okay, so I'm going to put that into my cold mortar and pestle, cold mortar, Oops. and I can go ahead and add the appropriate volume of my buffer. So I have my succinate buffer in here, not succinate, sorry, um, that's too soon for that one. So. It's just my isotonic buffer. I'm going to add initially just two milliliters, okay, just so I have some liquid in there. Uh, maybe a bit more. It's generally easier to work with smaller volumes initially, so that's why I said initially two milliliters, but I have a bit more tissue than I was expecting, so. Let's go with the full five. Okay. So there we go. Okay. And so I'm going to grind this. Now to help me grind it, because on its own it can be a little difficult. This will take longer to grind down this way. We're going to use a bit of sand. So what I have here is some, um, some sand that is, uh, has been sterilized, so it's autoclaved. Okay? I'm just simply going to add about a milliliter of sand to this. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and use that sand to help me kind of become an abrasive sort of substance that's going to allow me to grind these a little bit better and to break the cell walls a bit more. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to release the contents of the cell, and so having 
cell walls is going to prevent that. So we need to really damage those cell walls by grinding this. And so that's what we're trying to do here. Okay, so now we have our ground up tissue. So this is our slurry that's in here. So you can see it's just basically a green soup. It's a uh, mush, okay. I guess that's not really the technical term, but um, it's basically just this ground up tissue, okay. Now we're going to try to get that into our test tubes. So we first need to get that into a funnel. Now, um, as you, might, have, might not have noticed, I actually have more in here than what you would have. Um, I have uh, switched out the sample, or at least not switched out the sample, but I have ground up more tissue than what you would ground up, grind up. So I have about 20 grams of tissue in here because I'm trying to prepare samples for next week. Uh, but you would have a smaller amount, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this now into uh, a, f uh, a funnel. So I'm just transfer these out of the way. So what I have is a funnel on ice. It has about four, it's, it's basically gauze inside. It's about six layers of the stuff, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer all this into this funnel, and it's going to filter through that gauze. Now basically the gauze is there just to kind of keep the things like sand and stuff like that, um, and a majority of this uh, uh, solid material away and so we're going to end up with a bunch of liquid at the bottom of our flask. So I'm just going to transfer this into the funnel. I'll just move this in so you can see. Okay. And so there we go. So it's starting to drip down into the bottom of the flask. So as you can see here, we're starting to collect some of this material. Uh, again, I am trying to prepare this for a, a larger sample. I'm just going to wash this mortar down with an extra little bit of an extra two milliliters of solution. Okay, so I have an extra two milliliters of liquid. I'm going to try to collect as much of this tissue as possible from the mortar and just pour it all in here. Okay. And so I'm just going to Gonna fold over the gauze a little bit and just apply a bit of pressure just to speed things up a little bit. Okay, now your sample, because your size is smaller, will not be quite this large. Again, I'm trying to prepare for lab with multiple students so they will all need samples. In your case starting with a smaller amount you will end up with a smaller amount so you will end up with something that looks a little bit more like this. Okay so here's your sample from 8 grams. Now just because you put in 5 milliliters or 10 milliliters of liquid doesn't mean you're going to expect or you should expect to get all of it out so you're definitely going to get a lot less. So with the sample over here, I have just under two milliliters of liquid. Even though I added about six or seven milliliters in total, I didn't get a lot back. Okay, so we now have two samples. So I split up my homogeneity into two tubes so that I could spin them in a centrifuge. Now, um, there's a bit of a problem. We have uh, a liquid volume of liquid that we're not quite sure what it was supposed to be. So I divided up roughly evenly between the two tubes, but they're about 11 milliliters, but I'm not sure exactly if they are balanced. So how do we balance these properly? Okay, so this is where we need 
uh, a beaker and a balance. And we're going to tear the balance with the beaker on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one two, I'll take off the cap or without the cap. Okay, and this one weighs 15.8 grams. So it's upside down for you guys. But it's 15.8 grams. Okay, so what about the other one? Just make sure I wipe off all the ice. I don't want to weigh the ice that's on there. Again, this one is 15.8. Wow, that worked out okay. If it wasn't, then you would transfer from one tube to the other until you had an even weight. So, amazingly enough, these two tubes are balanced. So, that didn't quite work out for the video. Um, but I'm happy it did because this way I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm going to take these tubes now and put them into the centrifuge and I'm going to spin them down at 200 G's or 200 RCF for five minutes. And I'm going to collect the soup mains into fresh tubes. Okay, so here we are. The centrifuge has finished the five minute spin. Now, what I'm using here is a centrifuge that actually doesn't have a setting for RCF, it only uses RPM. So as you can see here, it's 1270 RPM. So because this one doesn't have a setting that allows me to set uh, this, the force in Gs or in RCF, I had to go online to a calculator to do the conversion. Okay, so there's plenty of those around, so you just have to, to search for an RCF to RPM calculator. Uh, there's plenty of those around. You just need to know the radius of the centrifuge, so just need a ruler and measure the radius from the center of the rotor outwards. Okay, so either that or in some cases you just need to put in the code for the centrifuge. So in this case here, the code is F-G3. Okay, so a lot of these rotors will have a code on them that you can input directly into one of these calculators and they will automatically give you the appropriate conversion factor into the RPMs. So in this case here, it was uh, 1275, so 1270 was close enough for me. Um, I can't do 1275 with this uh, numbering system here. Uh, for the next one, we're going to be spinning at two uh, 2000 RCF, which according to the calculator will mean about 4030 um, RPMs. So I can change that right now. Okay. So 4000. There we go. So, and that's going to be for, in this case here, let's check my sheet, 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to change the time to, say, 10 minutes. Okay, so my centrifuge is ready. I just need to transfer my samples. So here are my centrifuge samples. And so I can see at the bottom here, there's a pellet. What I want to do is take all of the supernatant and transfer into fresh tubes. So here's my tube B and tube B. So again, I'm going to try to make sure that these are balanced as much as possible. So I will transfer even amounts, even the same amount of liquid from one tube to the next. And if they're not the same, then I will try to balance them out using an actual balance. Okay. Okay, so we have our samples ready to go. I'm just going to take these over to the balance, make sure that they are properly balanced, and then we'll spin them down again for about 10 minutes. Okay, so here I have my samples. I'm about to balance them, and so I'm just going to weigh them really quickly. Again, just wipe off the outside. I don't want to have any ice on the balance. Let's leave the caps on this time. Okay, tube number one is 16.1. And number two, 16.3. So I'm off by 0.2, which means that if I transfer 0 0.1 microliters from this tube into the other tube, I should have an even amount. So I have a P200 here. I'm going to set this to 100 microliters. 
Again, I can transfer from one sample to the other because they contain the, essentially the same stuff. So I'm not cross-contaminating anything. So here I have 100 microliters. I'm going to put on a tip. Okay. I'm going to take out 100 microliters from here. And put it into here. Let's see if that does it. Again, this is the sample here, 16.2. And this one is 16.2 grams. Okay, so my tubes are balanced. I can now go ahead and put them into the centrifuge. I put them on opposite sides. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Our centrifugation is finished. So this is our second spin. That was for 10 minutes. That's done. Our samples are ready to come out. These are sample B. And I want you to notice that we have, in fact, a pellet and a supernatant. Okay. There we go. We have a pellet and supernatant. So we're going to put these on ice. Keep things cold as much as possible. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to transfer the supernatant into epitubes. That's just because the centrifuge that we have for the higher uh, speed spins, um, the rotor actually only takes epitubes. So I'm going to have to transfer that into epitubes. That's what you're going to do as well. You are going to have a much lower volume than I do. So you're not going to have all of this to transfer. You're going to have a much smaller amount. So you may have two or three epitubes to worry about. I am going to be trying to make as many epitubes as possible because, again, I'm trying to prepare some materials for a class next week. Okay. So in my case, I will take 500 microliters per epitube. And so I'm going to set this P1000 to 500 microliters. I'm going to try to make as many epis as I can. Here we go, that's 500, 0, 50. Zero. Okay, so I'm gonna put on a tip and start pipetting. This is not gonna be exciting, so I'm gonna let you guys go. We'll see you in a little while while I do this. Here we are, our centrifugation has just finished. So this was the half hour centrifugation at 20,000 RCF. So this is RCF with a star. At four degrees Celsius. Okay, so I'm going to open up our centrifuge. Good. There we go. And so, if we open this up, now these are the samples that I was spinning. You guys will be spinning a fewer samples than this. Let's take a look at one of them. They're all the same. And so, what I'd like you guys to notice. lock on me. Okay, so I want you guys to notice is that there is a, a green pellet at the bottom. And the solution above it is just kind of a light green color, but most of the green color seems to be in the pellet. So why do you think that is? So what would make the pellet green? All right, so we'll move on, but again, just think, uh, keep that in mind. Okay, so here we are. What we're going to do is we're going to just, just transfer the solution from here, the supernatant from here into our to D1, okay, or at least D1 in my case, it's going to be tube D for you. So I'm going to, I have about 500 microliters in here, so I'm going to take up P1000, set to 500 microliters. Now I may not be able to get all of it out. Uh, this box is fresh, okay. I'm not expecting to get all of it out because again, there's a pellet taking up some space, but we're going to get roughly 500 microliters out of this. So I'm going to just put my tip of the pipette on just underneath the surface of the liquid and it's going to, I'm just going to keep pushing it down as I take up the liquid from here. So I'm going to take all the supernatant as much as I can without bothering the pellet too much. And so I have, oops, not exactly 500, there was a little bit left over. I, again. I've taken most of the liquid out. The pellet is taking up some space, which is why I'm not getting exactly 500 microliters. I know I put 500 in, but again, the pellet taking up, is taking up some volume, so I've got a little bit less than 500. The remainder is in here. That's the pellet. Okay. So my C1 is going into the ice. 
my D1 is in here. It's a little bit less than 500 microliters. And so now I have all of my sample tubes collected. Okay. So I just need to resuspend my pellets for the sample C and sample B. Resuspend those. Uh, and then I'm going to store my sample H, which I collected initially when I first got the homogenate. That's a little bit of my homogenate to start with. Then my sample B, that's the, the first supernatant spin generated a pellet. Okay. And sample C, which is the pellet that's the green one that we just collected. Okay. Uh, we're going to resuspend this one as well. And my sample D, all of these are going to be stored until the next lab. Okay. We'll see you in the next video.